Welcome to Wednesday, August 14th. This is your Day Weather Podcast. I'm meteorologist Don Day, and thanks for listening. Well, today is going to unfold similar to yesterday, but we're going to have an enhanced chance of some pretty nasty thunderstorm activity in some areas. In particular, we're watching very closely this afternoon and evening an area across western Nebraska, western South Dakota, northeastern Wyoming, and extreme eastern Wyoming, then extending south into the northeastern Colorado Plains and into northwest Kansas. That area I just outlined, we're going to see some very strong thunderstorm activity. We're going to get the type of thunderstorm that you always need to watch out for in this part of the country. It's called a supercell thunderstorm. These are your organized, very large, very tall thunderstorms, and these are the ones that can produce tornadoes. These are the ones that tend to produce the really big hail and the potential for flash flooding. There's an axis that extends from near Gillette to Rapid City down to near and just east of Scotts Bluff, back west to around Luskin, Torrington, and then down into Fort Morgan, Brush, Sterling, then over towards Ogallala, North Platte, then down towards Goodland and down to near Burlington, Colorado. That is an area where we think there's going to be a breeding ground for these supercell thunderstorms. They're going to form, and then they're going to move southeast. One thing that gives us concern in this pattern is that the winds aloft at the jet stream level are coming in from the northwest while the winds in the lower levels and near the ground are coming in from the southeast. Those are opposite wind directions. This causes a lot of what we call shear. That shear causes spinning motion as those wind directions oppose each other. That causes sort of a rolling effect that does tend to make these thunderstorms get rotation. That leads to the risk of tornadoes. You get rotation. You also have more lift. The atmosphere today above us is also a little colder, so it's easier for the hail to develop. The areas that we think are most at risk, I'll throw out some towns and cities along the Nebraska-South Dakota-Wyoming border area. Places like Lusk, Torrington, Scotts Bluff, Sydney, Nebraska, Shatter, Nebraska, Alliance, Nebraska, up to Rapid City over to near that Gillette, Newcastle area. And we may see these severe thunderstorms get as far west as I-25 in Colorado and Wyoming, although they may end up just east of there. We can see these boundaries go west or east. They can kind of shift around and move around. So it really is a borderline situation for the I-25 corridor of Wyoming and Colorado. Those areas might escape the severe weather. It'll be hard to escape the severe weather in the Panhandle, western South Dakota, and northeastern areas of Colorado. Those are the areas that are probably most likely under the gun the most. Tomorrow and into Friday, it's a similar sit-up. Strong thunderstorms could develop in, again, the exact same areas as today. Now, for those folks listening to this podcast in central and western Wyoming, central and western Colorado, you'll continue to be dry as there's a dividing line. West of the Continental Divide, the air is dry and stable. East of the Continental Divide is where all the instability and the risk for severe weather will be today and to some extent tomorrow and Thursday. So keep your eyes to the skies. Keep your radar handy. It's going to be a late afternoon and evening smorgasbord of big, severe thunderstorms in those areas I outlined earlier. Thanks for listening to the Day Weather Podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you on Thursday. Oh, and by the way, today is a day to put that car in the garage if you live in western Nebraska extreme eastern Wyoming or western South Dakota, or the South Platte Valley of northeast Colorado.